I want to apologize for my uh, poor English. My name is uh, Arnoud van Doorn. I'm 47 years old. Uh, I come from uh, original, uh, I'm, I'm Dutch. I'm uh, born uh, in, in the Netherlands and I'm raised in the Netherlands. Uh, I come from a Christian background. Uh, I was raised as a Christian with all the, 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 the norms and values that uh, come with it. And uh, a lot of people say, um, I think it's, it's hard to, to convert from a Christian to Islam. I don't think that's the case, because if you are a Christian, we share uh, only one God, uh, we recognize the prophets, uh, and if you call them Jesus or Isa, you know, the, we are all from the same book of, of Abraham. So, uh, for me, the step from a Christian to a Muslim is not that big. I think it's much uh, more complicated if you're an atheist or a non-believer, and then you uh, become a Muslim. I have four um, foster children, I have no children of myself, the youngest is nine years old, Jamal he's also a Muslim, he's from uh, Moroccan origin and the oldest is uh, 22 and uh, he already left my house so um, my original profession is uh, I'm, a, I'm a youth and family uh, counsellor, I'm used to work in the more difficult areas of the bigger cities in the Netherlands where there is a lot of poverty and, and, and crime and uh, a lot of problems and I uh, uh, I'm, I'm used to work with um, uh, a lot of um, Islamic families also there in the past. Um, how did I become a member of the, the PVV from Jack Wilders? That's the question that a lot of people are asking me. Um, I'm, I never was an Islamophobe. I was really critical about Islam. I had all the prejudiced feelings that a lot of people in the Netherlands and the West have, like uh, that Islam is, is violent, it's oppressing woman, uh, women, they're all terrorists, and, and all these, you know, rather dumb ideas about Islam. It's, it's ignorance, but that is not an excuse. It's not an excuse for other people, it's not an excuse for me. But I was already a member of the, the Hague City Council uh, for uh, a local party. So I was familiar with the political structure, with the, the political work. Uh, I, had, I had some media training, uh, but I had some experience and Gert Wilders um, uh, asked me, uh, well, do you want to help me uh, building uh, a party? And that was about a year of five, six years ago. And I thought, well, yes, that might be interesting. Uh, so I said, yes, uh, I, would I would like to do that. So I, become, uh, I became a member of the, of the PVV. And, uh, well, I was uh, responsible for, uh, for example, uh, public relations in, in the way of how to influence uh, the people, um, how to influence the uh, media, and uh, I was also writing speeches for Geert Wilders. After the elections uh, three years ago, a member of the Hague City Council uh, for the PVV of Geert Wilders, and, well, so I had to quit my original job, so I was completely into the work of Geert Wilders for 60, 70 hours a week. Um, why Islamophobia? Why did it grow so much? And why is it growing so much in, in the Western countries, especially in the Netherlands? Um, I'm not sure about it, but I think there are several reasons. Uh, we have the, the crisis, and uh, people are um, well. We are we know that from the from the from the history that it's very easy to to create scapegoats. And in this uh, case, I think uh, the Muslim community in the Netherlands is is the scapegoat for the crisis. And they say everything is because of them. We have a lot of crime. It's also because of them. It's because of Islam. Islam is evil. And uh, well even politicians and media are using these feelings to create, uh, well, they want to create uh, an enemy and they are succeeding in it. How did I become from a very critical person, uh, very critical about Islam, to convert to Islam? Um, I was within the PVV for uh, maybe three years and then I was having some doubts. Uh, 
people are talking to me, Muslims, and they said, well, you're wrong. You're wrong about Islam. You're wrong about these ideas. Actually, it's a very peaceful religion. It's a very wise religion. And I, and I thought, yeah, right, of course. Uh, you, you, you're supposed to say that, but it's not the truth. But still, something inside of me was like, this is not good. Something is wrong. I'm, 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 I want to know more about this, if it's really that evil. Um, and I started to read not only the things that what I was supposed to read, that's the propaganda from the PPV, but I was reading for myself and I started to read the Quran. I was reading uh, about Sunnah, about Hadith, and I thought there are so many wise and beautiful things in all this information, so it can't be really that bad. And I was getting more and more curious about Islam. And finally, a colleague of mine uh, in The Hague uh, City Council, uh, he is also a Muslim, he invited me to come to the mosque in The Hague. And I, I thought, oh no, no, I don't want to go to a mosque because it's dangerous and it's all violent and you know, he won't attack me and uh, whatever. ridiculous ideas, of course. But he convinced me uh, to come with him and I've been to the mosque and I was really surprised. I thought they, they probably hate me, but they were very friendly. I really felt welcome right away. And um, I was invited and we had a long conversation. I think I arrived in the morning about 11 o'clock in the morning, maybe 12, and I've been there t till eight, nine o'clock in the evening. So that was not what I expected. I thought, oh, we have a short conversation and uh, I will see that I'm right about Islam and they're all uh, you know, evil people and then I leave and I think, okay, I was wrong. But something happened. Something inside, it's hard to explain, said to me, this is a very, this is actually a wise religion. This is a beautiful religion. This is very peaceful. When I was in the mosque, I really had a warm feeling and I didn't surprise it and I was a bit confused. And I, later today in the evening, I went home and I was really, my head was full of information and I, a lot of doubt and I was really confused. I didn't sleep for a night. And then the next morning I thought, well, I have to go back. And I went back to the mosque and we had another conversation and then I was starting to read and to learn and to speak with a lot of uh, scholars and other Muslims. And during this process, it would have taken maybe six, seven months, I thought, well, I started out of curiosity, but in the end I thought, it's not only curiosity, it's, this is something beautiful, it's something that fits me. Uh, and that was really something I didn't expect to happen. And, but it did. After two months, I quit the PVV, the party of Gert Wilders, and I said, uh, this is not my place. I'm not supposed to be here. What I've done was wrong. Um, and I quit. And that was a big step because at that moment I didn't have any job. Uh, I had no income. Uh, and I went home on my bike. And I sat on the couch at home and thought, what have I done? I have nothing. I've left my job. There's no way I'm going to get an another job. Uh, because you're too familiar, uh, people know you, and you're. Uh, but I thought, I don't care. I felt strong at that moment, and this inner strength was growing and growing and growing. It felt like a warm blanket, basically. The more I was reading about Islam, the more I was studying Islam, the more I was talking with other Muslims, the more it felt like this is me. And that ended in um, the Shahada. Very emotional moment in the mosque in The Hague. I was there alone with only the Imam. And I was really emotional. I actually had some tears. And uh, from that moment, well, I was a Muslim. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, well, um, if it's about Islam, I have to learn a lot. I have to read a lot and I have to study a lot, at least 10, 20 years, maybe longer. Um, well, if you study Islam, you have to study until you die. There's no end. I know that. I don't know that much about Islam, it's, but I know it's good. I know it's, it's, it's wise. I know it's a very peaceful and, and it, it has solutions for everybody and for, for all sit uh, situations, for any person. Uh, there are no exceptions. Um, from that moment, I thought, well, well, I have to do something with this. I'm, 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 not, uh, I'm not alone. There are in, in the Netherlands, there are almost two million uh, Muslims. 
We have 70 million uh, people living in the Netherlands, two, two million of them are Muslims. And uh, there are more and more people converting to Islam. And that's really a, uh, a good thing. Um, so they are losing the war uh, on Islam. I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, only this year we have 20% more people that uh, are converting to Islam than in the entire year uh, 2012. And Almost all of them are young people. Most of them are be, uh, below the age of 25. And that's why I think we have to reach out to the young people, to the youth, because they are the future. They are the future. A lot of people of my generation and all their, their mind is too polluted with wrong information by media, by politicians. I consider them uh, a lost generation. And I think we should not put too much effort, uh, effort in, into them to try them to convert, to, to try them to get knowledge about the real Islam. But I think we have to reach out to the youth. Um, a lot of young people are really interested in Islam because they hear so many information and everybody's telling them it's wrong, it's evil. But the funny thing is, because it's, so, it's, it's an issue and tell you what is wrong and right, then you want to know it for yourself and you want to find out for yourself. So that's a good thing, that's a good thing. And I think uh, there are no solutions. There are no solutions to, to fight Islamophobia. But I think if we can reach the youth, then we are we are gaining, where we, now we, we, go to, to, we are going to a right path, I think. And there is a lot of hate against Islam. A lot of people really hate Islam and it, it, has, it is completely useless to get into debate with them, to try to convince them. Um, but the young generation, um, they are curious and we have to be patient. We have to listen to them. We have to listen to their arguments. We have to get in dialogue. That's the most important thing that we have to do as Muslims, because dialogue is the basis of all our civilizations. And young people are, um, they, want to, to, they want this dialogue and they are interested. A lot of Muslims are, are, are angry about what's going on, about Islamophobia. But that's exactly what the politicians want. They want this picture of you know, angry and, and violent people. And that's exactly what we want. We should not do that. We should not. We should. We should give the right example. They should. The young people, especially young people, should know that we are normal people. We are not violent. We are not oppressing women. We're not supporting terrorism. We're not all criminals. And if we could, if we give the right example, and listen to them, and being patient, and having this dialogue then they will see, hey, they're all in normal, uh, wise, intelligent people and they will be interested in Islam. And they don't all have to convert, it would be nice of course, but at least if they know what Islam is really about, then that will fight Islamophobia. I'm sure of it. Um, despite all the efforts of media and a lot of politicians, they are not winning. Islam is too strong. It's too strong. But we have to be patient. This is not something that will happen within a few weeks or in a few months or within a year. It's going to take five years, 10 years, 20 years. It doesn't matter. We have to be patient. Patience, think, I think, is the key word. At this moment, I am also um, trying to establish in the Netherlands uh, a youth organization. Uh, I want to, uh, or to organize uh, seminars and discussions and uh, a lot of information. Uh, that is easily uh, reachable for, for young people, for children, um, from the age from well, the youngest groups that we have, it's, they are about 7, 8 years old, Muslims and non-Muslims, until the age of 20, 22, 25. Uh, most of them are uh, within the age of 12 and 18, and so that's the age that we, that they are really uh, interested in, 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 in new information. I have learned within the PVV of Geert Wilders, I, I learned all these skills 
you know, about uh, uh, media, uh, how to influence people, public relations, uh, and they really hate me for this because now I'm using all this information on the opposite, of course. I'm not a very important person. Not. It's not about me. I'm just a, a humble instrument in the hands of Allah. But still, uh, I think um, if I can tell my story to people like you, to other people, to non-Muslims, to young people, and to other people, I, I hope and I think that we can uh, bring the message about the true Islam. Many of you have heard or you've been told that Muslims are terrorists. Muslims are fanatics. Muslims are heretics. Muslims are extremists. Muslims are murderers. Muslims are hostage takers. This is what you've been told. And I'll tell you that in some cases, that is true. There have been, certainly, some Muslims, not just recently, but even before newspapers and the media came about, there have been some Muslims who were the meaner element of the Muslims who have done those kinds of things, certainly. But then let's be objective. Let us go to history and be objective. Have not Jews and Christians also done those things. And are they not also doing those things? Yes, they are. A criminal is a criminal. A sinner is a sinner. But you would never see in the media a Christian pedophile You would never see a pedophile called a Christian pedophile. You will never see a murderer called a Christian murderer or a Jewish murderer. Timothy McVeigh wasn't called a Christian terrorist. Charles Manson wasn't called a Christian mass murderer.
The IRA is not referred to as a Christian terrorist organization. Yet they are, in fact, committing, and they have committed some of the gravest, repugnant crimes. But they're not referred to as Christian terrorists, Christian fanatics. Then I ask, why? Why, when a Muslim is accused, maybe not even indicted, maybe not even convicted, but if a Muslim is simply accused of something, he is called a Islamic fundamentalist, Islamic fanatic, Islamic Muslim terrorist. Why? Because the media is controlled by people who want to malign Muslims and Islam. And I say that's unfair. While yes, that is true, that some Muslims themselves are responsible for some of the distortions about Islam. Some of the distortions about Islam, some of the misconceptions about Islam is as a result of the misbehavior of some Muslims, and that is to be fair and objective. But I think if you examine history and you ask yourself the question, who perpetuated the international slave trade that resulted in 80 million people being traded like hogs and dogs? Over a 400-year period of time, this wasn't Muslims, but they weren't called Christian fanatics, although Certainly those were, that was Portugal, Spain, America, Great Britain, France, all Christian countries and collaborated with the Catholic Church. When the conquistadors went into South America and ravaged that country, killed and slaughtered the people, poisoned the North natural resources, they were blessed by the church. And they're still blessed by the church. And nobody called them Christian terrorists. When the first settlers came to this country, there were people living here, in case you don't know that. Nobody discovered a country where people were already living. I can't come to your house and just set up home in your house and say I discovered it and put you out. There were people living here who are now called aborigines. A very nice word. Aborigines. It's like the native Indians in America. They're called the native Indians. They're not called Americans. They're called native Indians. This is because Christopher Columbus, he sailed looking for India. <laughs> and he wound up in what is now called the Americas, but the audacity and the chauvinism. See how chauvinistic the people are. Even though they knew it wasn't India, still, how chauvinistic they are, they still call the people Indians. And today, they call them natural, they call them native Indians, but they call themselves Americans. And today, you call the native people here Aborigines and you call yourself Australians. Now how this country was taken, you were not invited here, but it was taken with blood and slaughter. 
terrorism in its purest form, but nobody calls those people Christian terrorists. And now that you have sophisticated civilization here, Sydney, Australia, Brisbane, Australia, Melbourne, Australia, I mean, you know, down under, you got this, you had the Olympics here. It's all forgotten about now. And still, terrorism by governments still go on. And I don't say that terrorism by governments or individuals is right or moral. It is not. It is not. But we can't, on one hand, call some people in Afghanistan or some people in Chechnya or some people in Kashmir or some people in Palestine or some people in Somalia or some people in some other part of Africa or some other people in Indonesia you can't call them terrorists because they are seeking freedom from oppression when you justify in your own history that you did the same thing, but you glorify it and you justify it now. It's not fair. I say that a crime is a crime, whether it's done by some uneducated, unsophisticated people or some very educated and sophisticated people. A crime of government is just as bad as a crime of the individual. Yet the crimes of governments, they go unchecked because governments have power and there's nobody that can check them. But individuals, governments can hunt them down and put them in check. So I say that this issue that Islam or Muslims being fanatics, this is unfair. Islam is a system of faith.